in section 6.6, the title is called Applying Some Properties of what we call definite integrals. I want you to circle this word because you're going to hear me talk about definite integrals and indefinite. I actually, in this, definite integrals actually have limits of integration and when we calculate them either on our calculator or we estimate them with rectangles or trapezoids or we use geometry to go under the curve, we end up getting a number. Like, I'm just for shits and giggles going to put a 7 right here. Um, but when you have definite integrals, it's it's a number. We are going to, after break, just if you're wondering why I keep saying definite integrals, after break we're going to have what's called an indefinite integral, which is a function. Alright, so there's going to be a little bit of a difference. Okay? Um, don't worry about that one now. I was just explaining that word to you. You don't. You haven't even worked it with them without the limits on it yet. So there's some properties you're going to use. I've already talked about some of them ahead of time. So property number one is called the constant multiple rule. We had it for limits and we had it for derivatives. That when we said we had some number in there with the function, suppose it was 5 f of x dx, we are allowed to just bring that out front and then deal with it later. So constants can come out front, or sometimes I say constants stay put. All right? So um, the next one says that when you are doing an integral or integrating a sum or a difference, you can break it up. And that makes sense. I did that with our... Um, read in, read out. So I said, I like to break up that subtraction and make it actually the, the amount that goes in minus the amount that goes out. I would split it up. This makes sense, but what you do need to write down here is that there is, and I would star this, you can break them up and do them separately for these two operations, but it's not true for uh, multiplication or division. So just have that in the back of your head, um, that you cannot break up multiplication or division. There's, they have their own rules. Kind of like um, derivatives did. We have, what did we use when we had a product? Product rule. There's no product rule for integrating, but there's techniques. Uh, you can't go split them up. So only, you might even want to, like that, it's only for the plus or minus. This guy out here is new, but it's very common sense. It's the one that's going to get hit the most in delta math. Really what it says is that if you're going to integrate, and sometimes I think of just collect area from A to B, if I, and don't draw this picture, but if I wanted to collect the area from A to B, I could go somewhere in the middle and call that C, and I could just do this separately and this separately and add them up. Doesn't that make sense? Yeah. I kind of sometimes talk about it as like a trip. If I'm going to drive from A to B, it's perfectly legal to stop someplace on the way, right? And do it as two separate pieces. That's what that one says. The one thing you want to notice when you set them up, though, is that whatever this is, is the same as this. And we'll get to an example where you'll see why I'm choosing what to put on the top or what to put on the bottom. Those have to be a match. If I were to use just straightforward numbers, if I was integrating from 1 to 10, um, I am perfectly allowed to stop anywhere along the way, maybe at 7, and go from 1 to 7, and then from what? 7 to 10. Yeah, you, you, if you're just listening, that's fine. I know I wrote that very fast. But it's just saying you could stop three times along the way. Okay? Um, just be careful, though, that when you're setting them up, these two things match. This one we've already had. It popped up in another section where I think we had one where we were integrating from 2 to 2 on a worksheet earlier. And I, we were talking about how the f of x is the height and the dx is the base. And if you're going from 2 to 2, there is no base length, correct? Mm -hmm. So that one would be 0. All right. Makes sense. And we already talked about this one, that if you want to switch the limits, you certainly can. But what did I say you have to do? Negate what's in there. Yeah, so basically, all these properties, the only new one really is the one with the star. The other one
ones we kind of putzed around with. So we're going to be evaluating um, just using those properties today. It's going to be very easy. So this guy right here is a sum. I'm per and I'll slow down now. I'm perfectly allowed to consider those separately. So that's f of x. I can't see it, so I can't evaluate it. But they told me what it is. Agree? And then I would integrate from 1 to 3, 6 dx. So then on this one, you'll need to be told what this is or be able to figure it out. That one was given to me as 10. Do you guys remember how to get that guy? It was not given to me because it's expected that I should know. Six times close. Oh, two, sorry. Six times two. Yeah, I'm going to point over here and give you a visual of why it's six times two. This is the function y equals six, correct? That would be a horizontal line. Let me go draw it nice and neat up here. Up at six. And if I was integrating it from one to three, what does it make? A rectangle or square. Um, that is a rectangle, though. And the 6 is how high it is. And the dx is 2, which is the base. So the limits give you the base of the rectangle. The constant gives you the height. Agreed? You're eventually going to have an option whether you want to think about it like that. Or this was a 10, right? So I have a 10 plus a 12. That equals 22. So if you're doing your delta math and you split it up and you had a constant that looked like that, they don't have to tell you how much that's going to add to it. That circled integral, what would its answer be? Yeah, 5 by 6. You're going to learn how to integrate by hand after break. And you would get a 12 that way too. So you're, instead of thinking about it with geometry, do it with, I guess, like algebra. It would also give you a 12, so you're going to have an option. All right, but for now, you're going to have to think about it as a rectangle, 6 high and 2 wide. All right, we're going to go do another one that uses multiple of them. And then I'm going to skip ahead and do a complicated, the notes are really short. Actually, why don't you guys go try letter B? Um, it's giving me three pieces of information. Yeah, let's do it together. We'll do it. Let's go do it together. First of all, what can I do with the difference? Split it up. What can I do with the constant? Yeah. Bring it out front. So I'm going to do a little rewrite. I'm going to do three times negative two up to five f of x dx. So I took care of pulling the constant out front. And then I'm also going to take care of breaking up that difference. Then you're going to decide if you have any of it and or if you can find any of it. Is there any of that right now that you already know? Yes. Which piece? The G of X piece. Yeah, this guy right here, you might want to circle it. This guy right here was explicitly handed to me. So that's going to be a minus a negative 4. They gave it to me. The first part, they didn't give it to me, but it's pretty <coughs> obvious that if I want to get from negative 2 to 5, correct? I could go from negative 2 to 3. So just think about that. Are you watching? Right. So I could go from negative 2 to 3, but this isn't quite right. Okay, who just said that? All right, I, so take a look. I want to get there, so here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to write it out because I don't have very many examples up here because it's kind of easy today. I can go from negative 2 to 3. I'm just going to go like that because I don't want to write f of x dx. But then I have to go from where to where? Three, I told you those have to be a match. I'm not going to put, I'm just thinking it out right here. So what is it from negative, I'm going to go over here, I'm going to go equals. I know it's kind of messy. I've got the three, check. What is it from negative two to three? Six, correct? So 
multiply that three times, I'd have the six because they gave it to me. Are we good with that? What is it from three to five? Negative three. Why? Because I have to reverse it. Yeah, so that would be a minus three, and I still have the plus four. So I should actually parenthesize this if I can fit it in here. But do you see what I did? Because I'm not doing a lot of them. It's kind of a lot of number manipulating. What do I end up with? 13 when I'm done with that? Yeah. So I'm going to go to one of, before I finish this up, because there's not much I have to tell you today, I'm going to go to one of the delta maths and kind of show you a good way to um, think of it. I put a delta math. I should have down here. You can just watch if you want. I just screenshot this out of your delta map. So I like to think about when I'm doing these because I want to go from 8 back to negative 7, correct? And they gave me from negative 8 to 8, negative, it's kind of a lot to work with. So I always kind of like to look at that and pick it apart. Like, what's the whole trick? Like, if I had my integrals up there, what would be the leftmost endpoint? Negative 8. What would be the rightmost endpoint? 8. I would work with that first. Does that make sense? Figure out what your longest... I would start with this guy, and I'm just going to write it out loosely. I'm going to say if I wanted to go from negative 8 to 8, the whole way, correct? They put a stepping stone in there. Who's my stepping stone? Where are they kind of stopping for a bit? At what number? Okay, awesome. So I would say, well, if I want to go from negative 8 to 8, I should probably go from negative 8 to what? Negative 7. And I'm just kind of trying to get the whole trip laid out here before I deal with the pieces they gave me. But then I'd have to go from where? Negative 7 to 8. Is that proper notation? Huh? Holy crap, no. But it, these would be multiple choice or just single points. So you can just go ahead and kind of work at work at it like an algebra equation. So what is this one? One. Okay. What is it from negative eight to negative seven? Five. Correct. Plus, I have no idea. I'll just put a question mark. You see what I did? I broke it up into the whole way, negative 8 to 8. They had me kind of splitting it at negative 7. I can see that. That's going to help me get question mark. What is question mark? Okay, so from negative 7 to 8 is equal to negative 4. You will not enter that on delta math, though, because what piece did they want? You want so what would you enter? Are we okay with that? It's a lot of just like... Some of you are going to like it because it's so not really calculus. <laughs> this is kind of puzzly with numbers. So just make sure that you, you make things negative when you're supposed to and you don't when you shouldn't. All right, so back at page. Um, back over to here. This also is very familiar to you. So I, I kind of introduced 50% of 6.6 .6 before I got here. So you guys should already be very comfortable with Although the areas of both of these might be 10, correct? Because you can't talk about negative area. If you were ever saying, well, Ruth says we're getting negative area, that doesn't make sense. I'm not saying you're getting negative area. I'm saying your definite integral can be negative. So there's a fine line. So when you do your math with this, if they tell you this has an area of 10 and this has an area of 10, you're going to treat this in your math as a what? We've done that. So that's nothing new. Okay? The next thing is, with the manipulations of these. And for, um, I'm going to kind of just go down here, talk about the ones that you should be really good at because we introduced them already. Do we like to go forward or backwards better? Forward's easy. If I was going forward from 0 to E, what would I just add up? Negative 7 because it's below and I'm going forward, plus 10 and I'd be done. That's easy. Correct? We've done this before. Um, a couple of these are tricky though, so just wait. Letter B. I'm going from B to D. C is missing in there, that little piece. What actually is it according to this problem? I'm just going to let you look. It's 3. Would it be a positive 3 or negative? Positive. So if I was going from B to D, what numbers would I add up? Negative 5, positive 3, and what? Whatever that might be. 
Made in life. Done. We've done that before, correct? Mm -hmm. Have we talked about the absolute value in versus out? Yes. yes. The absolute value outside just says if it's positive, keep it positive. If it is positive. If it was negative, make it positive. So I'm going, I'm traveling from A to 0, positive 15, then a positive 5, and then a 3. This would just be 23. Do you remember the difference between C and D? Because we've already talked about it. Like 50% of this, you should be going, yeah, this makes sense. Correct? Do you remember what the dis difference was when they were outside? Oh, you don't do it. Yeah, you just add them all up as you travel from left to right, and then when you're done, absolute value it. Now I'll slow down for the next two. All right. For the next two, if you don't get them, I can honestly say I've never seen it on the AP test. But I like to give you stuff that's also what I would call like at the collegiate level or takes a little bit deeper thought than maybe how AP tests you. This type means you understand the properties and what it means to integrate. These are tricky. Does that make sense? And they don't want you to get stuff wrong due to them and tr trying to trick you a little bit. But it does take some good thought. So I want you to think about what would happen in here. So take a look at this. It says I'm supposed to go from negative E to E. But do you see I don't even have a negative E on there? Okay. So you got to kind of think about that. So the limits seem kind of goofy as well. But from 0 to E I can definitely get, correct? One from zero to e be negative seven plus ten, which would be right. So for sure. Now, if I was going negative e to zero, agreed. The absolute value in here is going to trick my negative x's into being what positive. So it's just going to act the same way as it did on the other side. Agreed. Correct? So it's going to trick these x values to being positive. And so it's going to trick them to going positively the same. So it'd still be another negative 7 plus another what? A 10. Right? It's just going to trick it and say, well, look, when these are negative in here, it's it makes it positive. So you're just going to get this exact same graph duplicated. If you understand that, great. If you don't, doesn't particularly matter. But it's kind of a little deeper thought, right? You have to think about what's that absolute value doing in there. It's making the x's positive, so it's really tricking negative e to zero as being the exact same thing as it was from zero to e. You get that great? Not anything. The next one's also similar because it has a little, or tricky, because it has a little pre-calc in it. So if I want you to see if you remember in pre-calc, do you remember if you had a function f of x and you put a negative x in front of it? Do you remember what it did? What did it do to it? Flipped it over what? The x-axis. Yeah, it took all the y's and made them negative. So it, it did a flip over the x-axis. When you put it in here, do you remember what it did? Flipped it over the y-axis. So what was on the left went to the right and what was on the right went to the left. Correct? I would ch I'm going to have this be a challenge just because I did want these to go over 15 minutes and I already am. If you're up to challenging yourself, try that one. If not, no big deal. So the last thing is don't let a discontinuity bother you. So this, uh, and then I'm done. I'm going to just go finish Delta Math and then those of you who finish in class can continue with that semester final review. So I've got a, by the way, the very first thing on the semester one final talks about continuity. There were piece, how many of you have done it or started it? Right, in the continuity, I think the first ones were piecewise and it says, is the function continuous? What do you just do with the three to see if the function's continuous? Plug it in. If you get it at the same place and there's a dot, solid dot there, it's continuous. This is discontinuous there. I'm going to go graph it. It's at 0, 7, and it goes down 2, over 1, down 2, over 1, down 2, over 1. It's a line going like this until I get to 3. So it's actually like that. That's this guy. But then it stops and does a jump 
because then it's y equals 4 from there on out. So the answer to that in delta math, for those of you doing the semester review, is discontinuous at 3. Correct? But this is saying to sketch in and shade what would uh, be the definite integral. Well, I would go from 0 to 5, so I start shading in all of this stuff. I would quit right here, though, because I have a problem. What would be the shape of this guy? A trapezoid. If I were to change colors, I'm going to go with a highlighter, I think. I'm going to throw that out there. Throw this here. Grab that and this. If I were to start shading to 5, so that's this piece of it, what am I making? A rectangle. But remember, I'm actually adding up an infinite amount of them where their bases are going to zero. Will I eventually close that little gap that's there? If I kept going forever and ever and ever and ever, and ever would the limit approach what the area should be? Yes. yes. Okay, as I go to infinity, I will get so close to this, the area as well, sometimes we call it converge. You would just take the trapezoid and add to it the what? The reason I talk about that is sometimes on the AP exam they'll have a problem like that, and one of them for multiple choice will say uh, does not exist or cannot evaluate. And kids think, well, that's it because there's your discontinuity, right? But as you collapse in, if you still just have the two shapes, are we good? We're done. So your homework is 6.6. .6. There's delta math. It's using the properties, mainly that one that I did where it splits it into pieces. So just kind of, you might need to have a scratch sheet of paper out. I won't collect it because it'll be really chicken scratch. You're going to kind of go, well, from 5 to 8 I've got, but then I need to get from 8 to 10. But if you give me 8 to 10, you're going to piece a puzzle together. What do I always say if you get two red X's in a row? Watch your video. Before you watch a video, I'd see if the example's enough. If that's not enough, then the videos are usually one to two minutes. They're not like 20 minutes long. Whoops, I should stop recording.